Hi, my name is Ed Rudiger, and I'm going to share with you some scripture and a devotion I wrote. The scripture passage is from the 10th chapter of Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drank or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it's been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it's not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. And here's a devotion that I entitled, True Greatness. I think we're very clear about what greatness means in our world. I mean, even for Christians, people are great when they've achieved some sort of numbered base success. For example, a businessman is great when he's made a lot of money. Doctor is great when she saved a lot of lives. And ministers are considered great when they've done both. Generated a lot of money and saved a lot of folks. Of course, I understand that only God saves us. Still, greatness is shown by making it to the top, right? And although it's certainly not the case with all, this may explain why a lot of those who are great, or at least considered great in our society, tend to be a little bit arrogant and a little bit narcissistic. Maybe that's the true price of greatness, at least in our world. But I'll tell you, that's not the way Jesus defined greatness. Instead of being full of pride and focused on self, a great Christian is humble and focused on others. And instead of being at the top, a great Christian positions himself on the bottom so that he can identify with those on the lowest rung of the ladder. And instead of looking to achieve some kind of success, a great Christian seeks opportunity to serve. You see, even though it flies in the face of the values promoted by our world, Jesus was very clear about true greatness. Amen. Thanks for listening. And remember, you are a child of God, and God loves you very much. Goodbye.